What surprised me the most after speaking to 1,000 plus Amazon sellers is that most of them had absolutely no clue how much money they were losing on their PPC, which is why in this video I'm going to share my entire PPC audit strategy that will reveal all of the opportunities in your account in 20 minutes or less. And make sure to stay until the very end of the video because I left my best strategy last. Let's dive right in. The first strategy we have is uh, segmentation analysis. And essentially what that is, is splitting up your account using different filters. So you can move your campaigns into, I guess, different sub-segments and analyze their performance based on that and take appropriate actions faster. So over here, I'm just going to start by adding my first filter, which is uh, ad type. So I add sponsored product once, sponsored brand once, and sponsored display once, and maybe sponsored TV if you're running that. Uh, and I just check the performance difference between all of them. So let me just throw sponsored product in there. And actually, before I actually in this filter, take a look at this spend sales and ACOS figures here. So we're doing around 20,000 in spend at the 37.5% ACOS, uh, and we're doing 52,000 in sales. So let me just move down, need to hide this, hit apply. Over here, you can see sponsored product is actually spending less than 50% of the total budget, which is unusual in and of itself just because it's usually 80 to 90% of budget, maybe even 100% for some accounts. That's the first thing we notice here. The second thing is that the ACOS is 34%, which is around three points uh, lower than the overall ACOS for the account. And this is spending less than 50% of the budget. This is probably a sign that we should drive more spend into sponsored products. And we can do that by either um, jacking the bids up uh, adding new keywords, adding new match types, creating new sponsored product campaigns for different products, and so on. But we should probably be more invested into sponsored product based on these performance figures. After that, uh, we can check sponsored brands. So over here, you can see we're actually spending almost 11,000 per month on sponsored brands, uh, which is unusual because, again, this is around 60% of the account spend. And usually it's the other way around with sponsored product spending more than sponsored brand. Sponsored brand is generally around 10, 15% of spend. So that's the first quote unquote anomaly. And the second thing is that this actually runs at a 41% ACOS. And it's doing the same sales figures as sponsored product, even though it's spending quite a bit more. This probably means that we're over invested in sponsored brand. And what you could do here is you could pull back on the bids a bit. You could remove bad performing keywords. Uh, you could decrease budgets on sponsored brand. Um, you know, you could maybe, if you're fine with this 41% ACOS, you could invest a bit more into sponsored product to get it up to 41% ACOS so you could sell more and so on. Uh, finally, I'm just going to go over to sponsored display. Let me move my head over here. Sponsored display and apply. Again, super uh, underinvested here. Uh, only $250 in spend at a 25% ACOS, uh, doing $1,000 in sales. Uh, this ACOS is 13% under the account average, which is, again, very significant. Uh, and this means that we're very underinvested in sponsored display. So over here, it's probably a campaign setup issue. So I probably just create more and more campaigns for sponsored display. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the first filter. Um, after that, generally what I do is I look at uh, targeting. So we have manual and automatic. There's not that big of a difference actually in this account. Uh, they're both running at almost the same ACOS, as you can see. So manual is most of the account spend, 37.5% uh, ACOS. Uh, auto is the remaining uh, 1 or 2K, uh, and it's at 36.5%. Um, there's a 1% difference. I don't know if this is statistically significant or not, so i probably just go back a couple of weeks, see if this persists or not. And if it does, I could jack up the bits a bit. But I got not much to do here. Some accounts, it's um, much more pronounced than that. So I've seen accounts with like a 5, 10, 15% ACOS difference between auto and uh, manual. And generally, that's something obviously that you want to take action on. Over here, I could either leave this or just have like a slight bit increase. So these are the four, uh, first two filters. After that, I generally go into targeting, which is uh, actually glitched out right now. Amazon isn't providing the data for it. Uh, but essentially what I do if I did have the data is I just go into the targeting type filter, um, enter exact, apply, look at my results for exact, then enter phrase and remove exact, look at the results for that, enter broad, then remove phrase and apply again and look at the results for that. 
and over here I'd keep on uh, keep an eye out on three numbers ACOS I want to see what ACOS each one is at I want to see what CPC they're at because you might be bidding more for one match type um, undeservingly uh, than another match type and this is actually very common and I'd look at conversion rate I want to know how well I'm converting on each match type if there's a huge difference for example between your conversion rate and broad your conversion rate and exact maybe you need to go in and add some negatives into broad right so conversion rate ACOS CPC will tell you most of what you need to know then you also want to see sales and spend to see how much you're invested into each match type right are you under invested are you over invested based on those other three numbers that we mentioned and based on that you want to uh, take action on the bids and also on adding new keywords so if you're doing very well on broad you only have 200 targets and you have like 2000 targets in exact you could start moving those 1800 other targets into broad as well to increase spend there the second strategy we have is catalog analysis so essentially what this is is we pull all of the data out of business reports and we also pull the product level data out of uh, campaign manager we export both and we just organize them into this excel sheet so what we want is you want each asin uh, total sales and total sessions it's percentage contribution to overall sales so that's asin sales divided by account sales times 100. same with spend asin spend divided by account spend uh, times 100 if you have sponsored brand campaigns just divide it equally uh, between the ASINs in the campaign and distribute it that way just because you're not going to be able to get proper ASIN level data for sponsored brands um, ad sales again just the ASIN ad sales ad spend organic sales is total minus ad spend sorry total minus ad sales um, then after that we have percentage ads which is the percentage of revenue coming from ads percentage coming from organic and the tackles so essentially there are four things you want to look for here uh, number one is asins that have a higher sales contribution than spend contribution so something for example that's spending uh 10 percent of the total budget but actually making 20 percent of total revenue this is an asin that's super super efficient with ads so every dollar that you pay in terms of ad spend creates two more dollars or two times the amount of money that you'd make from another asin since the percentage of spend contribution is uh, half of the percentage of sales contribution. So if it's one to one, so if I'm spending 10% of the budget and making 10% of the revenue, it's in line with how the entire account is performing. If my sales contribution is higher, that means that I'm going to make more money for each additional dollar invested here than I would with most other products. And if it's lower, which is the second thing you want to look for, is ASINs with lower sales contribution than spend contribution. This means the actual ASIN is inefficient and every dollar you're adding in to this ASIN in terms of PPC budget is going to net you a lower return than if you put it into the average product in the account. So over here, if you have something with good um, sales to spend ratio, you want to invest more in that. If you have something with bad sales to spend ratio, you want to either pull budget out of that or at least stop any future investment from going into those products because they're not winning products unless again they're new or there's like a specific reason why their uh, their uh, ratio isn't that good right now like seasonality for example these are the first two things you want to look for after that you also want to look at percentage ad sales and percentage organic sales so over here if you have something or if you have an asin where most of your sales are coming from ads alone that means that you're not selling enough organically so i generally say if more than 70 percent comes from ads this means that either you're just not bidding effectively on the keywords that you need to rank for or your conversion rates just not that good so you're not ranking or maybe you're even just cannibalizing your organic sales so you might be ranked like one to five on a bunch of keywords that you're performing well on and you're also running ads with like a huge top of search boost to get some of those top of search clicks so people see your organic click and they see the uh the ad placement they just go for the ad placement so you end up spending money for sales you're going to make regardless so you could be cannibalizing you could not be uh, bidding high enough for some important keywords that you need to rank for or your cvr might be too low um if the percentage of organic sales is too high again that's actually a bad thing most sellers don't understand this but if more than 70 percent i'd even say more than 50 percent of your sales come from from organic uh, it's probably a reason for worry because that means you're under invested in ads and if you're under invested in ads your competitors will start to steal your placements they'll steal your market share and your organic traffic will start falling too i've seen this with many sellers i've seen sellers lose like six seven 
figures of monthly sales just because they weren't running enough ads. I've seen sellers drop 50% year over year because of this. So if your uh, organic is too high as like a percentage of total sales, you should start investing more in ads. This could also mean that you're overly dependent on recurring customers. So if you sell like a supplement and 70, 80, 90% of your revenue is organic, it probably means that it's just recurring customers and you're not driving enough new to brand people. And you could be overly spending on banded traffic. So your entire PPC budget might just be going to banded traffic, uh, which is why the uh, organic or the uh, ad spend isn't as high as it should be. So that's why you're under invested in ads because you're not going after generic. So these are the four things that you want to look for. Uh, and this will tell you where to uh, pretty much divide your budget and where to allocate it. So you want to allocate it to sales to ASINs with very good sales to spend like contribution ratios and to ASINs that either have uh, too much organic or spending money on ads and they're not ranking organically, in which case you'd create organic ranking campaigns for them. The third part of our audit is search term analysis. So over here, we're going to be using the search term report to find new keywords and find new keyword negations to add. So first thing you want to do, of course, is just export it from Amazon and throw it on a Google sheet. Uh, then you're going to add a filter in. And essentially, you're going to run two different filters, one to find keywords to negate and the other to find keywords to add. So for keywords to add, you're just going to go into seven day total orders and filter for anything besides zero. Just hit this, you hit OK. And this will show you every search term. I just replaced all of these because this was real data and I can't show that. But uh, I just replaced all of these. These are going to be your actual search terms. And this is how many orders that they each individually produced. So this is a really, really good source of finding new keywords. Especially uh, since these are already verified. So unlike with Cerebro or with any other keyword research tool or you're kind of just trying your luck, these are search terms that have already converted for you. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, you also want to double check that you're not re-adding the same keywords in every time. So what I do is I go back into Campaign Manager and export the keywords from the targeting tab and I'd compare. So when I have that list of search terms that I want to add in, I just go through the targeting sheet as well and make sure I'm not adding duplicates and then just add anything unique in. And you want to add it in every single match type. So an exact broad and phrase. Right? You can also automate this with our tool. So with AI Hello, you can already have this like set up in like a couple of seconds. So that everything from auto, phrase, or broad is just moved back into those campaigns and you can decide which campaigns it gets harvested into and in what match type um, pretty quickly. So that's also an option if you don't want to uh, work with these sheets and like copy paste everything yourself. Um, that's to find keywords, to find negations. Let me just reverse this. Select all. Uh, you want to go back and you want to see um, search terms with zero sales that have spent more than your average selling price or your average order value uh, in this period. So if you're selling like, I don't know, $20, $30 per order on average and something has spent $20, $30 bucks and hasn't produced any sales, I generally just go in and negate it. So you can just go into spend and Let's just pretend it's $10 for this account. You can add a conditional filter. Let's pop this back open. Uh, filter by condition greater than, and you're gonna have to add the amount in. So I'm just gonna put like 10 bucks. Okay. Let's just set this out. Okay, so nothing in this account has spent more than 10 bucks without any sales, which is good, obviously. That's what you want to see. Uh, in the scenario that you did have something that spent your average order value with no sales, you'd want to go back, uh, find which campaign it's from, which is very easy. It's like a campaign name column, and you want to add it in as either a negative exact or a negative phrase based on the actual keyword. So that's pretty much it. That's how you find the... Um, search terms to add this keywords and the search terms to negate. Part four of the audit is segmenting your branded and unbranded spend. So over here, we're just going to go back to the search term report and we're going to add the filters back in and we're just going to go and we'll uh, clear everything. And then you're just going to put the most simple form of your brand name uh, and then you're going to select all. So over here, I replaced all of the customer search terms with the word search term. So you don't really have anything. 
But if my brand was called search term for whatever reason, I just write something like search and I'd select all and I just have like a quick scroll through everything. Generally, you won't have that many search terms, so you can just check them all uh, one by one and just confirm that these are all branded search terms. Then just add any other variations. Like maybe I could just go back in and add term, which maybe is another variation for my brand name or an abbreviation for it. And then I just select everything, make sure it's all accurate. Then I'd go in, hit OK. And that would show me all of my customer search terms. Then over here, you get your spend and you get your seven day total sales. Right? And this is seven days um, as in the attribution period, not seven days as in the last seven days. I think this is a 30 day search term report. So what you'll do is you'll scroll to the very bottom. And you're going to create a new row. Right, and I'm just going to save us the time and just not do all of the math for us. But you just create a new row and you just sum everything from the very top until the very bottom. We have 16,000 search terms here. Generally, if you're just looking at branded, uh, you're only going to have like a few dozen or like a couple hundred at most. So it's not going to be this many and you're just going to sum them all up and figure out what the total ad spend is on uh, branded and what the total sales are because what happens is some people run auto campaigns and they end up showing up for their own branded search terms and it looks like their autos are doing very well but in reality they're actually not doing that good and they're just like recycling existing customers and doesn't really bring any incremental revenue in so over here you just figure out very quickly what your total ad spend is on branded what your total sales are then you can subtract these from the total ad spend and total sales for the entire account to see how you're doing without branded. And then you can also take them as a percentage to see how much of your budget and sales come from branded. So this is pretty useful. Uh, a lot of accounts don't really check this and they end up spending a lot of their money on branded just because it makes their ACoS look good and it doesn't really drive that much incremental revenue. So you always want to check this periodically. I check this at least once per month to make sure your ad spend is going into the right place. The fifth part of our audit process is budget analysis. So for this, you just want to go into the budget tab on Amazon. Uh, over here, you can see we're actually doing a pretty good job. We're in budget almost 100% of the time, besides a few campaigns that went out of budget. But um, generally, what you want to do is see our overall time and budget rate, and then see the estimated missed sales, clicks, and impressions uh, that you would have gotten. This data isn't super accurate just because it comes from Amazon and Amazon's incentivized to give you good data to get you to spend more on ads. Uh, but generally, around 40 to 50% of these numbers could be correct. So if it's saying maybe like 18 to 57,000 in estimated missed sales, in reality, it's maybe like 9 to 25 or 9 to 30,000 dollars in missed sales in the last 14 days. Uh, so this is something you still want to keep an eye out for, even if it's not super accurate. Um, after that, you can also filter this out. So you can filter these by each ACoS level. So do we have any super low ACoS campaigns where we're running out of budget? Because we definitely want to make some room for those. So ACoS less than 20%. Are we running out of budget on anything? And again, over here, we're in budget 100% of the time. So there's probably not much we can do. But generally, you'd see in your account that you're actually running out of budget on most of your campaigns, at least 5, 10, 15% of the time which is something you want to fix immediately because it takes two seconds to fix and it adds like an extra five to 10% in revenue um, at the same exact ACoS that you are getting, which is obviously very hard to do in other, uh, other scenarios. So I just start filtering these. So see like if anything under a certain ACoS amount is running out of budget, right? Check if any of your top selling campaigns. So let's remove the ACoS filter over here. Let's filter by um, sales. Are any of my top selling campaigns running out of budget? Right? Campaigns with sales greater than 5,000. Looks like we only have one. And it hasn't run out of budget. We got two greater than 2,000. This number is just going to have to come back to your account size. So if you're anything above 2,000, it's running out of budget 2% of the time. Then you just go in and you check the individual campaigns. So this one's out of budget 9% of the time. So you'd want to raise the daily budget for this, right? And you can do this for the individual campaigns that you have after filtering by sales and ACoS. So the two most important things are to make sure that no um, high ACoS campaigns are eating up all of your budget 
and that the good campaigns in terms of ACoS um, and sales are getting to spend as much as they can. Because if you can get more clicks at the same conversion rate and at the same CPC, that's definitely something you want to invest in. The final part of our audit process is what I call targeting analysis. So for this part, you just want to go to your targeting tab. I finally got it working again. And again, you're just going to put a couple of filters in. Uh, the first filter we'll put is an ACOS filter, and it will be for ACOS above mean. And I mean the mean or the average for the account. Let me just move my head over here. Um, so ACOS above 37.76%. Right? So the way overall ACoS works is you have a bunch of super high ACoS targets, you have a bunch of low ACoS targets, and those average out to give you the account's overall ACoS. So over here, you can see the super high ACoS targets are actually running at 66%, even though the account itself is only at 37%. These have spent six and a half grand, right? So these are all the targets that aren't doing well for your account. And you can just scroll through and you can look at each one. You can order these by spend. And you can start to decrease their bids or turn them off if they're that bad. Right? So this gives you every single bad performing target and every target that is raising the account level ACoS. You want to be careful though, uh, because some of these targets will be for newer products or products that don't like have enough reviews yet. So it's natural for those to be underperforming. So you want to be careful if you do run bulk bid changes, that you don't affect those. Right? On the opposite end, we can also do less than mean. And these are all of the targets that are lowering your account's average ACoS. So over here, these are running at 22%. So these are running at 13 or 14% less than the account's average ACoS. So over here, you want to increase bids on these. So the CPC here is 70 cents, whereas the CPC on the lower performing targets is 73 cents. So we're actually paying more for those lower performing targets. So over here, we want to jack the bids up to get this spend up so even if this starts running at a 30% ACoS, we're going to be spending more so the account's overall ACoS will go down. Plus, we're going to be reallocating some of that budget from those bad performing targets into these good performing targets, which will decrease the ACoS on those bad performing targets and again, help with the overall ACoS for the account. So this is the first thing you want to do. Uh, after that, you also want to filter for um, targets that have spent uh, your AOV without producing any orders, which is similar to what we did with search terms. But this is for targets because some people miss these. So you want to do sales equals zero. And you want to put spend greater than your average order value. I'm just going to leave it as 10 here. Then you want to stretch this back for a lifetime. Right? Because sometimes you're going to have keywords that spend like a couple dollars each. Uh, like every month and you just can't tell that they're not doing well but over like an aggregate period of time especially if you have a larger account with like 50k plus per month in net spend and maybe 100 plus uh, ASINs you're definitely going to miss out on a bunch of keywords that are only spending a few dollars per month but in aggregate are spending a bunch of money and not really giving you anything back so over here we have $1,500 spent uh, with zero sales um, on keywords that have spent more than $10 uh, throughout their lifetime. So these are keywords that are probably not going to convert. I just use $10 as like a random number. You want to put your average order value for your product, and that will give you like another level of guarantee that you're not removing or uh, decreasing the bids on something that might eventually convert. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can see your um, super high performance keywords, and then you can just select them and run bulk actions. So for bulk actions, you can increase bids, decrease bids, set them all to a certain amount and so on. So that's what I do. Then I'd go to those keywords that aren't doing well and I'd either pause them if they're that bad or I'd at least decrease the bid on them. You want to order these by spend so that you get the worst ones first. Then you want to check keywords that have never sold anything and have spent a significant amount over their lifetime. That's pretty much it. That's my six step audit plan. Uh, we cover pretty much everything. You got product level data, campaign level, target level data, targeting type data, ad type data. This covers pretty much everything. It doesn't take that long to do, as you probably noticed in this video. Uh, so I uh, I would recommend maybe getting started on this today. And if you actually want us to make an audit for you, uh, you can just email me at safe at AIHello.com or you can just book a call with my team um, at AIHello.com directly. 
and we'll be happy to run our own audit process for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next week.